Hey guys, it's Lemming Rush. Today I'm going to be showing you how to deal with losing more than 50% of your HP right off the bat. So let's get started. Are you kidding me? This is Lakeville and I'm trying to make a bit. Okay, Lakeville with 3 RD. This is going to be fantastic. Fuck. <laughs> Alright, so we're on Lakeville. It's a standard game. I have no clue what the hell I'm going to do for this game. I'm thinking of actually playing... The valley. Now, the valley, generally speaking, is an awful position, but what sometimes... So, how do I say this? I think that it's very common for RD players to sit in K2, K1, and I wonder if I get to E2 in time, if, and maybe I'll have time to set up my Binox and spot RD players as they drive up to position. Now, the reason I think that might work is because then, you know couple already players might be dead and then you can free up the map the other play that works on this map and i think i'm actually going to do this because this is a bit more enjoyable and a bit less you know playing the valley isn't the greatest decision is i can play the mid now mid way riskier you know going to the valley it's very easy to run away i'm gonna rush up to e4 i suppose <laughs> and uh it looks like i'm gonna have some sort of support hopefully we'll see hopefully these t67s don't block me it's very common for td players to, what the to just stop in the middle what is he doing dude this guy's in a bottom tier td <laughs> it's a bold strategy caught i just want my fucking binox to <laughs> fucking teammates this is retarded Holy shit. What the fuck? <laughs> so, just just in case anyone is curious, when your teammates ram you, your Binox disengage. So that's fucking annoying. Uh, I'm gonna sit here, because I don't want to die, to be honest. This guy fired, so that's gonna get him killed. I'm okay with that. Like, taking two hits to get a tier 6 tank dead is a good trade, in my opinion. Good, he's gonna die. Then we can shoot at this KV-1S. Our heavy... Our IS-7, who went mid, <laughs> does not have a lot of life left in him. Of course, the 67 who is ramming me is dead. That's, I mean, I feel good about that. I just got hit by a tiger. So, this has been an awful start. <laughs> what the hell? I need to get out of here. I just got shot by a tiger. It didn't make any sound because that's a new feature that Wargaming hasn't decided to fix yet. Uh, this is not a good start whatsoever. So, a couple things I'm noticing. <laughs> Actually, a lot of things that I'm noticing. One of them is that we've won the city. No problem. The other is that we've got a KV-1S sniping at A5. The other is that we've got a valley. The valley is wide open. Now, normally the valley doesn't get pushed, but I'm just going to double check just in case to make sure there's no tanks that are about to flank us. And then I think I'm going to start playing the mid. Well, I've got two options. I could play the mid and shoot at these people, or I could try pushing the valley with 300 HP. Now, I think that I might actually be able to push the valley right here because, you know, if the enemies were here, they would have seen that no, they would have fig figured out that this was clear by now, in my opinion. So I'm probably going to get caught off guard by a TD who I thought was better than you is uh, as I poke this ridge, but we're going to give it a try. Maybe we can kill Artie, flank some people and not. Oh, what the hell is this blasphemy of a vehicle? That thing reverses quick. Okay, so we made sure the valley was clear. At least we know no one's pushing it. That... <laughs> what type of play is this? To me, it looks like they've just got eight tanks and they're all camping. That's my read of this situation. They've got Tigers, WZs, and so on who are just sitting in base. And then all of our high tier tanks are low on HP. So I need to figure out how to break this camp. And I found myself in the valley trying to do that. So that's a great thing. Just want to see if I can have the gun depression. Now I'm going to set my Binox up. It would not surprise me if there's an RD here or here or here, you know, that I just can't see right now. So maybe when they shoot, that's possible. I'd love to push this side, but I'm not going to be able to do it with 300 HP. I do have the KV-1S who's coming behind me. How do you deal? Okay, this is what's going to happen. We're going to lose the city in multiple seconds right here. You're gonna fall back, I hope he falls back because he's got all the HP on our team and we're gonna have to prepare to lose the city to give them support. So I wanna fall back, we're gonna lose the city, they're gonna push up the zero line and then I wanna shoot at them as they push up the zero line. That's the best thing I can do right now with my 300 HP and the fact that all of my, you know, like I've got an IS who's 82 HP. So 
this is not like we have to do a ton of damage as a one shot for this to work out so where the question now becomes where's the best place to sit to actually be effective while my crusader is kind of fighting it out well first thing i'm not going to be obnoxiously aggressive i want to have shots right here and this might work see if they yolo this crusader myself this is and the t67 will have shots assuming you know we actually hit what we're aiming at there we go, he's dead. And now we have to wait for someone else to yellow this Crusader. It's very likely that they're gonna yellow the Crusader because they're one shots. And then it looks like the Leopard is gonna be presenting himself as bait too. Now I don't want him to present himself as bait. Obviously the Crusader's not gonna get out of there, but hopefully the Leopard falls back and we can use him as a, you know, he can scout later on, but. Jesus fucking Christ, I just checked the valley. If the Turan pushes, who cares? It's a Turan. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, I could... The Artie's obviously worried about us getting flanked by the Turan. I'm not. I don't really care. Like, if he pushes through, we can just kill him. Uh, I'm more worried about the city, who's eventually going to be pushing into our two Artie through the zero line. So that's going to be the most pressing matter in a couple seconds here. Now, obviously, if they're pushing through the zero line and they push through the valley, that's a bad thing. So right now, this is kind of when... The valley becomes relevant. I just want to make sure that's clear, and then we'll have to set ourselves up to deal with that zero line push. Because, I mean, I'd be surprised if someone's pushed the valley just right now. They they haven't pushed the valley all game, so that kind of implies that they're still not going to push it until like six minutes in. You know, though my guess would be three minutes is when they'll finally push. <laughs> camping team now this works out what i'm gonna do is i need to make sure that they don't push through the valley so i'm going to sit here set my binox up and maybe you know at least i'll see them here or here at like at the very least but i mostly want shots there you go that's what needed to happen <laughs> that's exactly why i was sitting right there just in case i was wrong about the regression they did push through the valley and now we're in a bit of an awkward situation where well, this, this KV-1S is going to get shot in the rear pretty quick here. Okay, so I'm going to sit here. That's going to create a crossfire with this IKV. If the IKV pushes up to here, I'll have side shots on him. Once he's dead, I mean, hopefully the Turan has followed him so we can kill both of them at the scene. Okay, this IKV is not being... Shut the fuck up, Artie. Holy shit. We need to deal with one side at a time, right? So I want to deal with the valley first before anything else. This guy is looking... I don't think he's going to shoot at me just yet, right? Like, I don't think he actually has shots in me. He's moving forwards. The leopard's flanking him, so this is going to work out perfectly. The leopard's information tells us that the two-run has not pushed the valley, and now that the valley's clear, like, the leopard basically told us that the valley was clear, we're going to be able to deal with the entire zero line and this Panzer 4H, who's going to be right up here at C4 in a couple seconds. So this is kind of where the carry becomes a bit... Uh, more difficult. I know nothing about the Turan other than it's ugly, so I'm assuming because it's ugly, it's garbage. Which actually seems to work out quite frequently in this game. See, I'm creating a crossfire right here. If this guy pushes in, the KV-1S will have shots, and so will I. Uh, the problem is that bloody Tiger. Tiger doesn't have shots. I want to see if I can kill these guys here. If I can just kill them, it might be worth taking the hit. He gave cover to that Panzer IV, which is fine. <sighs> Shit. <laughs> I'm now a one-shot to the Tiger because I took the hit there, right? So there's a ton. There we go. It looks like the Leopard gets the kill on that guy. Now the Tiger is dead. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's how you turn a game around, man. Not a lot of damage, right? But intelligent play has kind of kept me alive. Now, the next thing is not to throw it, because this WZ probably has a lot of HP. I would assume that the WZ was sitting at A9 supporting his Tiger, or trying to support his Tiger. He didn't do a very good job of actually supporting his Tiger. And what I would think right now is happening is that the WZ is going back to prepare himself to defend the base, because he's been camping all game, you know? His entire team didn't try to do anything aggressive whatsoever. So... What I think is going to happen is my, myself, this is not the right play, just isn't. I'll explain why in a sec here. What happens in this situation is you push in one at a time and you die. We've got a full HP KV-1S sitting behind us. I am not going to go die with this Leopard 1. I'm going to wait for the, the KV-1S to... 
Dude, this guy is making weird plays. <laughs> Why is he doing this? Okay. I'm not going to say anything. That is not what I thought would happen at all. <laughs> Artie is where I thought he was, though. Good. And we get the kill. So, <laughs> not a... Not a <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like, Lakeville... So not a high damage game, but I would feel like myself the and like a bunch of people helped to carry this by simply staying alive and not killing ourselves. Yeah, dude, this guy did amazingly. This guy did amazingly. Fucking good job. Sometimes, how do I say it? Sometimes you have bad games that start off really bad. And the reason they become good is simply because you say, okay, this is a shitty start. And... I can't do anything for the next couple minutes and you just have to kind of accept that and you have to read the situation and, and just try to make plays safely you know get safe information for your team and so on and so forth and that's kind of how I mean that's how I turned this shitty game where I lost 500 HP right off the bat into 887 damage and four kills like it's not a spectacular result but it's probably one of the most important things to learn if you want to try to become a better player at this game so i could talk for ages because i'm good at that and i like hearing my voice but i think i should end the video here um it's not exactly special you know but i thought it was really demonstrative of how to act like very common to experience this type of thing in world of tanks so i hope it was enjoyable if you want to see more be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button and i hope to see you around later guys Bye bye